Hi, this is Jason Perler with ZDNet Tech Perler. I'm here to show you the new Nespresso Pixie. Yes, in fact, you are looking at a coffee machine. It's actually an espresso making machine. Uh, Nespresso contacted me. They are a division of the Nestle company and they've been developing this espresso making system for over 20 years. Uh, actually close to 30 years is when the patents for this particular espresso, espresso making process actually uh, started. And um, the Pixie is what this machine is called. is actually the smallest uh, espresso making machine that Nespresso has ever produced. Um, you can see that this is a demi tasse cup. This is not a full size coffee cup, right? So you can see the scale approximately how big this machine is. Now they contacted me because we were doing a gifts for grads gallery and they thought that this might make a nice graduation present for uh, someone going into college or grad school. And uh, we do know that grads like coffee and we know that IT people like coffee and espresso because God knows we spend so much money on Starbucks that maybe we'd like to s save some money. So this this system is, is really nice. I mean, I think you happen to think it makes really, really good coffee. Um, the only problem with it, it is the like most proprietary coffee making system in existence. Um, these Nespresso pods, as you can see them, well, first of all, you can only get them from Nespresso. You have to order it from their website or there are other ways of getting them online, such as through eBay auctions and other murky places on the internet but essentially each of these comes in a pack of 10 and uh, it has about uh, 7 grams I think of of coffee in it, espresso grade coffee and they call these the Grand Cruz because there's about you see all these different flavors they got here they got like it looks, it's like a dozen flavors and they're all formulated for different types of pours, either for espresso pours or the lungo pours. Now an espresso pour is a short pour, it's one shot, and a lungo pour is more for a long shot, so a long pour. Now, the price of each of these little guys, you know, they're, they, they're around a dollar a shot. If you, if you figure out, you know, you're, you're spending retail price for them. Um, it is kind of expensive. I mean, if you compare it to even something like my Keurig machine over here, right? I mean, these guys, you know, you can usually get it for about 50 cents a piece. Um, I was able to get uh, these, you know, online for about, I don't know, 65, 68 cents a piece after shipping. So... I mean, it's not the cheapest type of espresso you can buy, but the quality is excellent uh, for what you're getting. Each of these little shot capsules has about a lifetime between not six and nine months. So uh, and I believe they are nitrogen seal that keeps them fresh. Now I'm holding here a decaf because it's like almost 12 midnight when I'm doing this video review now, and I really don't want to be completely wired. So you'll see here, I'm going to drop it into the receptacle here, right, and, and it's, and it's going to go in, and you see this lever here, you must, and I repeat, absolutely must, pull it completely forward, actually, what the hell, there it goes, there, now, now it's locked into, it's locked into position, okay, if you did not move that lever completely forward, um, and you tried to operate the equipment, um, it absolutely would still run, which is not a good thing because it would get water and stuff like all over the table. Um, the instructions that come with this thing are not very good. Um, <laughs> we had a couple of failed trials, um, you know, when we first started operating the machine and we start, first started understanding how this thing worked. Um, so I'm going to turn the unit on right now, push the button, and it takes probably I don't know, about 30, 40 seconds for it to, to completely warm up. And it blinks uh, while you're waiting for, uh, for the coffee or for the, the pumps to prime and to, to get hot enough. Now you'll see in the back here there is a, a reservoir mechanism, uh, reservoir area. It's actually, it doesn't look like a lot of water, but it is a lot for espresso shots. So I mean, you can probably shoot about at least 15, 20 espresso shots. Now you can see here that the 
the buttons have lit up completely. Okay, that means it's ready for operation. So um, now I'm going to pull a shot. So I'm going to hit the shot button. And this, this is a 19 bar pressure unit. Now that's kind of a meaningless number only because that's the unregulated amount of pressure that the, uh, the coffee maker makes. Uh, if you're one of those coffee geeks and you're like into like, you know, there are like $2,000 machines, $1,000 machines that will use more standardized type of espresso, uh, what they call ESC pods or even straight up coffee. But I mean, for convenience factor, I mean, this is just pretty amazing. I mean, the crema on this coffee, on this espresso is really, is really quite nice. Um, you, there's also a separate... Um, milk frother you can buy for $100. Now this machine is about $260. So um, for the size and for the quality of, of, of the espresso that you're getting, let me just taste this one. That's a nice coffee. That's a really nice coffee. It's pretty darn good. Um, like I said, you're, you're, you're basically trading off, I mean it's kind of like the Apple <laughs> this is basically like the iPad or the Macintosh of, of coffee machines. Um, it's ultra small. It's ultra tiny. It would definitely fit in a dorm room. There's no question about it. Now, one of the things that we had a little problem with figuring out was how the hell do you get the... You, know, you notice what happened here. The, the pod went into the disposal area. Now, the, our problem was, was how the hell do you get the pods out? Because in the instructions, it doesn't really tell you how to do that. But basically, it's just you just pull the front straight out. Okay, here's the disposal area, and the dead soldiers stay there. And that's basically all there is to it. As I said, my only real reservation about this coffee machine, this espresso maker, is the price uh, of the of the supplies, really. I mean, the price of the machine, 260 for espresso machine. I mean, like I said, there are espresso machines that go for way over $1,000, $2,000 if you really start getting into espresso, but they take up a huge amount of countertop space. I mean, literally, I'm going to show you the size of, you know, one of my drinking glasses, right? Here's a drinking glass, a big drinking glass. This is like a 16-ounce like a drinking glass. Okay, that's that's a pretty darn small machine. I mean, I mean, I gotta admit that's just that's just really darn impressive. I mean, you could fit this in your cubicle at work. You wouldn't have to go out for Starbucks and spend four dollars for a cup of coffee. You just do one or two shots, and even if you're paying, I guess, a dollar per shot for the supplies at full retail. I mean, that's still not bad. I mean, they got some really good flavors here. Um, I really like the ristretto, which is um the black color over here. These over here are the more stronger, more intense flavors. Um, these are some of the decafs and lighter ones over here. And these are more for like the Lungo type shots. Okay. Um, like I said, the, the milk frother is $100. It's separate. I do like the fact it's a separate unit because you don't have to use it. It's not, it doesn't bulk up the general size of the thing. Um, and, uh, you know, you could use that milk frother, buy it separately, the, the, um, the, the air frother and use it with a regular coffee machine, it will work pretty well too. Um, it does come in different colors, I'm just looking at the, this is the model they sent me, it's a blue one. Uh, but they're all basically the same, and there's just, you know, some of them got red sides, and like, it's like just, like I said, just like the, 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 the original iMac, it's got different, it's got different colors and stuff, um, that you can go with. So it's a real fancy, you know, a lot of people in Europe really like this system. Um, I will tell you, you know, you, you know, there have been various attempts to reuse these, these pods, right? But, you know, if you look on YouTube, you know, they've got all these videos that show you how to remove the foil from this, take the coffee out, put aluminum foil on top, and reuse the pod. Well, guess what happened? Well, when, they, well, when Nespresso, Nestle redesigned this system, um, they basically made it so that the... It was, it, I guess it's got like anti-piracy detection. I don't know what you would call it, but basically what happens is if you try to use regular foil on the top, you don't get the full puncture effect, and you basically get a lot of spillover. And it's very hard to fill these capsules to the same exact uh, tampering, ta the tamper level, which means you know filling it all the way to the top as you would a normal coffee pod um, or a, co a coffee shot for a regular espresso machine. So it's... They, they've made it a lot more difficult. Now, I know a couple of companies out there are trying to re-engineer their refillable uh, pod units. 
uh, but they're trying to see if they can stay, you know, far away from the the, uh, the various different patents that uh, Nestle has on this thing. Um, basically, you want to use one of these machines, you got to be able to afford the supplies. It's that's that's just the bottom line. Um, you're trading off um, a lot of convenience. Um, look how easy this thing is to clean up after. You just basically take this and you throw it in the garbage, and that's it. There's no messy grains to you know, to clean up or anything. You just uh, turn the machine on, wait about 20 seconds, and 20 seconds you got a, you got a fully pulled coffee shot. You know, that's, that's basically the bottom line. So, Jason Perlow with the Nespresso Pixie, signing off for Tech Broiler. Good night.